motion video in Power Director 17. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you my camera equipment, how I set it up, and exactly how I went doing this. Now, it starts with getting your camera settings proper. I'd set my camera to 16 by 9, and you'll have to research how you do that with your own camera. Now, you can use cell phones. There's all kinds of apps out there that you can buy for 10 bucks to do stop motion. You can use just about any camera, even GoPros, to do stop motion because stop motion is nothing more than take a picture, move the item a little bit, take a picture, move the item a little bit, take a picture, and continue on. Which are more popular movies they've made. Some of them have taken up to two, four, five years to make because of how painstaking and how tedious it is. The more the smaller movement is, the more it looks more like it's real lifelike. Now, a lot of people you've seen on YouTube, whether they're doing baking videos, hiking, you know, whatever they're doing, if they move the item too large, you literally see it jerking across the screen. This is amateur stop motion. The idea with stop motion is to see it very smoothly run like a cartoon. And that's the whole idea of stop motion. And 16 by 9 on my Canon 80D, for example, everything has to be sh shot in manual mode. You want to turn off your auto-focusing on your lens. Um, everything you want manual. You want your ISO set on one number. You don't want anything messing with your controls on auto. That's one of the biggest things to remember. And once you get all that, you're pretty much off and going. Now, I had a remote that I connected to my camera that I would click the button, it would shoot the, the picture, click the remote, it would shoot the picture. That's a better way of doing it. You don't want no shake with your camera or else it's going to show up when you do stop motion video too. And, and my remote, I think it was like $20 off Amazon. I bought a cheapy cheapy. I didn't even buy a good one. And uh, you'll find that when you do things like that, even on a cord would be fine too. But once you get everything in place, you can, you can make a pretty cool stop motion video whether it be for an intro, an outro, or maybe in the middle of the video. But let me tell you, it takes time. Just to make this video here that I've made, for example, it took me a couple days to get this video together. I'll show you the setup of how I have my camera set up here. So here's the setup for stop motion video. You'll notice I've got three lights here. One over here, another one over there, another one over there. They're all pointing down at the table now. The camera, my Canon 80D, is sitting on an arm here, and then it's sitting on a claw. Like these things are like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. And this is like a tripod, it's just a single rod is all it is. And it's lighter than taking a whole tripod. And then the Canon is hooked up over here and I got it hooked up to a macro lens okay now I've got a big monitor sitting on a wooden desk pointing away from my table and I run an HDMI cord uh, run an HDMI cord from the monitor over to my Canon 80D and that allows me to see what's on the monitor. So then I can slowly take my coins and I can move them, take a picture, move it, take a picture, move it, take a picture, move it, take a picture. And on my Canon 80D, I've got a uh, remote clicker, I guess, where it runs remotely. I think I got it for 20 bucks off of um, Amazon. So stop motion videos, slow motion, whatever you want to call it. Literally, it, it's like the old cartoon days. I mean, I remember back, man, I'm getting old, that uh, we would buy these books and we would flick the pages of the books very quickly. And then the top right corner, you'd see Goofy running or one of the Walt Disney animated characters would be doing something and that would sell the books because everybody wanted to see that little movie. Well, basically that's what you're doing. You're moving it, taking a picture, 
moving it, taking a picture, and moving it and taking a picture. Then you're going to take all those pictures and we're going to bring them in the power director and then we're going to make our stop motion video. But how you do your setup is up to you. There's all kinds of, for example, phone apps. Um, if you're doing it by phone, um, there's all kinds of apps out there that allow you to do this. It doesn't have to be a Canon 80D. It doesn't have to be, it could be a GoPro. As long as it's something that takes a single picture. And if you can keep the light the same, the ISO the same, and nothing ever changes but the actual object, then you're okay. You'll even see some people do stop motion video where you'll see hiking equipment kind of come into the screen. And they've got their cameras pretty high in, in the air. They're putting their cameras almost on the roof. Um, they're finding some place to put their cameras. So a remote clicker does come in handy. There are also some cameras, like my Canon 80D, will allow me to do what's called time lapse, and I could say take a picture every 10 seconds. So if I'm moving quickly, I could jump in, jump out, move it, jump in, move it, jump out, click, jump in, move it, jump out, click before that 10 seconds goes off. You can also do it that way, but the objective is all you're doing is taking multiple pictures as you move your items around. And then you're going to bring them in the power director, and we're going to take those now, pictures. As you can and see from my camera equipment, I got it set up where it's shooting down at the table. Some of my photos were long. They weren't wide. And it took me a day to figure out what's going on with that. And what was happening is I had my camera so perfectly level that the sensor was telling it to shoot that way, to shoot long instead of, you know, wide. And I was like, wow. So I had to actually put my camera more on a tilt to make it not shoot long to get all my images the same. Basically a 16 by 9. And then it worked really well. So other than everything in manual mode, make sure you got your camera on a tripod. Um, I had my camera set to 16 by 9. Once your camera settings are all nice, you can do other research to figure out whether it's a cell phone, whether it's an icon, whatever you're shooting you can get the information out there on the internet and how to set it up. And once that's all done, and you got all your pictures, and you've done all the time to put it all together, doing it in PowerDirector for stop motion is really, really easy. It's literally only a few clicks. But it is very time consuming when you're doing stop motion. So let's head on over to PowerDirector and let me show you once you get all your pictures, what you actually okay, now that I have all my photos I took for stop motion, I'm going to grab them all. And I loaded them all in one shot by simply clicking the first one, scroll down, hold in your shift button, and click the last one. This highlights all of them. And you could do the same thing when you actually click load and you bring them in. Now all I'm going to do is grab this and drag this down to the timeline. And now they're all in there. We shrink it up a little bit and you'll see them all here but when I click on them you'll notice I got some black here. That one's okay but then I got other ones where there's some black showing up. Now I have a crop sensor on my Canon 80D so they're not going to be perfect. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on this funny looking triangle thing here. And that's the crop selected image. And you have to do this to every single image. So I click on that. And as long as it's on 16 by 9, because that's what I want to enlarge it to for video, I say OK. And that's going to line it up. Then I click the next one. And I continue down through the process and watch what happens to the black lines. And you'll notice it expands it to the proper screen. So this is going to work well for when I actually upload to, um, to YouTube. If I don't want to have those black lines in there. And they're not very pretty. I mean, who wants to really have that? Now you'll notice here, I can grab this and go up and go down. 
So keep that in mind when you're making a stop motion video with a crop sensor camera. Because chances are you're going to want to pull this up. So when you're taking the photos, keep in mind that there probably is not a lot of room at the bottom which you think there is. And you're probably going to have to pull it up is what you're going to have to do. And you'll see as I go through this process, over and over, I line it all up and basically I'm just doing each one. So as you can see, stop motion video is time consuming. Now, one of the biggest keys with stop motion video is, um, you know, micro movements. Now you'll see people on YouTube that things will just fly across the floor. But in actual movies, they do micro movements. They'll literally move the hand a twitch. They'll move the finger a twitch. And, I mean, it takes them years just to finally produce a movie when they get all the segments done. And when they actually make stop motion video, they're actually using a um, another program that does that. I can't remember the name. But it's like 300 bucks, and that's all it does is stop motion. I'm sure you do some Googling or some YouTubing, you'll see somebody else that's mentioned it. But for most of us that just want to make some very simple stop motion video in our, in our YouTube videos, or, you know, just something new for the family to watch if we make a DVD, this is pretty cool. Now, I've done it with some quarters just to mess around. So it was pretty easy. So let me finish this up and I'll come back when I'm done here. Okay, now that I've got them all done and I've got them cropped to full screen, now the trick is to setting my duration. And again, I just hold, I click the first one, go to the end, hold my shift key down, click the last one. So they're all highlighted in blue here. Now there's a drop down box here. You see it right here beside Fix and Enhance. When I drop this down and I open it, it's going to come up with duration settings. Five minutes is way too long. And this is how long I want it to play for. So if I wanted to say do it, I don't know, every three seconds, show me one. And you'll notice that went really tiny. And I'm going to click this to open it up so we can see it better. Okay. Now watch what happens when we hit play. You'll notice the quarters are now moving across the table. And this is achieved by moving your object, taking a picture, moving your object, taking a picture, moving your object, taking your picture over and over. And that's how you do this. Now a lot of people do a video on their everyday carry or their hiking equipment or whatever they choose to do on YouTube and this is how they're doing it. To give it a little more pizzazz, to make it more interesting when you're watching it. And this is how you do stop motion in PowerDirector. It's really just a matter of a couple of clicks and then you've got yourself a really nice animation of things moving across the screen. You're really only limited to your imagination. At any rate, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Hit subscribe, hit me with a comment, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.